Hey guys, so I want to preface things by saying I really dislike when people do these sorts of videos and spend a whole lot of time talking and don't show you their results to the very end. So I want to do things a little differently and cut straight to the chase. As you can see above, here is a table containing the progress from my 60 days of vertical jump training. And you can see at the end, I saw an average of around four inch increase to the five different plant types. So here you can see some side-by-side -side footage of three different dunk attempts, one from day one, one from day 30, and one from day 60. I tried to sync up these videos as best as I could, but obviously you can tell the camera angle for day 60 especially is quite different than the previous two. That in addition to day 60 is also a different type of dunk, so it's not quite exactly the same but I had to use it just because the only footage from that last day where I did a right left plant. So I wanted to keep that consistent across all three. So here's the routine I used. By no means am I a vertical jump training expert. I'm just a tall, fairly athletic guy who wanted to see how much he could improve. So this is what I scraped together by looking at some other folks on YouTube and just doing a little bit of research on my own. I'll link some of the channels and videos uh, that I was looking at below, um, but I'm sure there's better routines out there. It's just I wanted something that was simple and that I could do completely at home uh, without the use of any extra weights and just try to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. I know I just dove right into the results at the beginning, but if you're curious about the measuring process, what I did was I stuck a piece of tape to my finger and then I would just jump as high as I could and stick it to the backboard. Obviously, this isn't the most accurate method of measuring vertical jump, but I figured I'd make do with what I had. For each of the five different plants, I would give myself three attempts and then would use the best score from each. With the help of my brother, we then measured from the highest piece of tape for each attempt down to the ground, and I made sure that the rim was at 10 feet. Although the rim height didn't matter for the tape measurements, I wanted to make sure that it was at the proper height for reference in the dunk comparisons. The final measurement I took was my standing reach. So what I did there was just stand up against the wall, flat footed and try to touch as high as possible and then measured that piece of tape as well. So that wound up being hundred inches. To get my vertical from each of the jump attempts, I would then subtract the standing reach from the total height. As you can see here, I was able to dunk in the beginning. However, my dunking ability was really inconsistent and I'd miss quite a few dunks. Uh, additionally, I was really only able to dunk off a few plants and could not even get close with my right foot single leg. I know I already showed the routines at the beginning of the video, but I figured I'd dive a little more into detail and show the actual exercises to clear up any confusion. I would do this three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. To start off, I would do five to 10 minutes of jump rope as a warm up before moving on to pistol squats. This is by far the most difficult exercise of the bunch. And in the beginning, I could not do them at all. So what I would do is I started off by using a railing or a door and would use that to support myself as I got down into the pistol squat position. Eventually, as I kept on doing the routine and built up more strength, I was able to use that less and less as a crutch and eventually by the end was able to do them unassisted. The next exercise was max jumps. This is simply just jumping as high as I could. However, I made sure to focus on both doing a right left and left right plant and alternating between the two. Exercise number four was drop jumps. This is where you jump from an elevated surface and as soon as you hit the ground, you wanna jump back up to your maximum height as quickly as possible. I used the step stool, but you could also use stairs or any other raised object. Exercise number five was calf raises. I once again used the step stool as an elevated surface to make it more difficult. You could also use a staircase, but if not, you can always do them on the ground. Finally, exercise number six was knee ups. This is where you sit on your knees and with the help of your arms, you launch yourself up to your feet. As you can see here, once I get myself to my feet, I finish off the exercise with a squat. I know these are pretty difficult, so if you can't do them at first, I'd suggest maybe substituting with a squat jump and eventually working towards these. 
As I mentioned before, I would do this routine three times per week and would also supplement it with a 30 to 40 minute long basketball dunk session, uh, either on Saturday or Sunday. After doing this routine for 30 days, I then retested my vertical. Once again, I tried to keep everything the same and use the pieces of tape and would do three attempts and use the best result from each of the five different categories. As you can see in the top right corner, the average increase in vertical across the five different jump categories was about two and a half inches, with the greatest increase of three inches coming to my two foot standing jump. Overall, I was pretty happy with my progress over the first 30 days. As you can see in this footage, those extra inches of vertical were quite apparent in my dunking abilities, as I was much more comfortable and could also dunk off of the four major plants. After day 30, in order to get more comfortable with the ball in my hand and actually dunking in game, I decided to scrap my body weight routine and instead do three to four weekly dunking sessions that would last for about 30 to 40 minutes each. In addition to that, I would do a daily 20 minute mobility routine, and this was to stay pain free as well as to prevent injuries. Once again, I followed this routine for 30 days and then retested on day 60. As you can see in the top right corner, my vertical once again increased. However, across the board, it generally wasn't as much as the first 30 days, with the exception of my two foot right left plant. Although my vertical didn't see as much of an increase in the days 30 through 60 as it did in the first 30 days, I would argue that this second routine was actually more beneficial to dunking. I think it became apparent to me that although doing the different exercises was really beneficial in developing my lower body strength, that nothing really substitutes the training of jumping with a ball, which is a much different experience. Replacing the body weight exercises with more dunk sessions allowed me to further develop my technique and timing. As you can see here, I was able to dunk from a standstill, which I wasn't able to do at day 30. I could also do alley-oops, both off the bounce, as well as throwing it off the backboard to myself. And overall, I was just much more comfortable both in the air as well as landing safely. Overall, I was pretty happy with my results. If I were to do it over again though, I would probably do a hybrid between my original routine and my second routine and just work more dunk sessions into the body weight exercises. Anyways, hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. See ya.